Yo yeah, guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another episode of the FM Save. It's episode number 29. And today we're returning with two massive games as we face Brighton and Crystal Palace away in the penultimate episode of season four, where with seven games to go, Fulham are just outside a European spot. Before we get to the big games though, shall Fulham have you getting on off camera? So of course in the last episode you saw our heavy 5-0 defeat at Anfield and the 2-0 home loss to Chelsea. Four games in the run off camera. We have responded with three wins and a defeat as well. Uh, we began with a return to winning ways 1-0 in a West London derby away at Brentford. Patrick Bamford scoring the only goal of the game in this one heading in a Bab and Gida flick on and following that a 2-0 loss away at the Etihad against Manchester City. Played a gig and press in this game throughout our backup side because it came in midweek and I thought we got far more chance of beating Bournemouth on the weekend and I want a fit, fresh and raring to go side for that trip there, uh, sorry that visit of the Cherry. So lost the game by two goals to nil, odds on Eduard scored their first and then uh, Lavia, Lavia uh, scored their second with a minute to go but of course we expected defeat and the reason I was fine with it is because we did indeed beat Bournemouth on the weekend with a much fitter and regular first 11. Uh, well my three goals to nil, Geraldo scored our first, God knows what the goalkeeper was doing, I've got no idea how he misjudged the flight of the ball so poorly for that one, we scored our first goal, Bamford then scored our second and then uh, later on in the game, Geraldo got his second of the game in stoppage time heading in a Lewis Cook cross and our final game was a 2-0 home victory against West Ham for our third win in four and three clean sheets in four as well. Uh, took a while to get going once we did take the lead through Geraldo 58 minutes in, we were seeing the game out and with 12 minutes to go, Paragambi scored an absolute cracker, contender for goal of the season, rarely showed two replays but I need to for this one, what a goal in a 2-0 victory as our South American Wonder Kids came good once again. So we're looking at the Premier League table. As you can see, we're outside a European spot, but a win in our first of two games today away on the South Coast against Brighton will put us back into 7th place. Now, as you'll see, um, only 5th and 6th now are highlighted for European spots. This is because Chelsea won the Carabao Cup, so they've already guaranteed a, uh, a European place for next season. Of course, they're still hoping they can finish in the top four. Um, but the reason why 7th has been taken out is because in the FA Cup right now, if I show you that real quickly, Spurs have Everton and Manchester United have Chelsea and right now Tottenham are outside of the top seven. So if Spurs, who, by the way, have undergone quite a bit of change uh, in terms of their managers uh, in recent years, Thomas Frank has replaced Pep Guardiola as the man in charge there now. But if Spurs do win the FA Cup, that will mean that 7th will not give you European football. They will take it, because I don't think they're going to finish in the top 7 now as they're currently uh, 12 points off Leicester with 6 games to go. Um, so yeah, Spurs win the FA Cup. That will take out 7th as a potential place to qualify for Europe. Only 5th and 6th will do. So we'll keep our eyes on that. And hopefully, no disrespect to Spurs, but for our sake, hopefully they get knocked out in the semi-finals. Anyway, 6 games to go, game in hand, win it, and we are back in to the top 7 on goal difference. Oh, God, we're going to choke it. Honestly, we're going to bottle it. I just know we're going to bottle it. Destiny is in our own hands. And I don't like that. It's too much pressure. So we'll look at the development centre right now. We've just had a youth intake as well. Um, as I always say, don't get too excited by my youth intakes. They're never anything good. Our best young player uh, from this youth intake is a guy with full determination and the unambitious personality. Yeah, so no one really good for my youth intake this year as per. Um, heading to the game, nothing else to show, so let's just dive right into it. I'm so nervous, man. I really am, because there's a genuine chance we could do it. We've got a great chance. Our remaining fixtures, you know, are tough. We've got a couple of big teams to face, but we we got a great chance. I just... I just feel like like it's it's just it's just not going to happen. I just feel way too pessimistic. I just think we're going to bottle it to be honest. So this is our team: four two three one. Rodax in goal, but for us KWP, Adarabayo, Ongwene, and Roberts as well. Lewis Cook and Zambo through the middle. Grealish on the left, Bamford on the right, and the kids para can be supporting Geraldo. Uh, I've mentioned every single episode. I've got to keep on showing their development, man, because it is remarkable the development they've shown in their debut seasons together. But again, that's what having a great coaching staff can do a lot with the good training facilities on the bench. Ashby Hammond, Mings, Reed, Gagliardini, Babangida, Caballero, and Bobby Reed, who, by the way, is going to leave in the summer to join uh, San Jose Earthquakes in the MLS after four years with us. He was a bit of a legend in seasons one and season two, but now he's off to America. First of two, it's Brighton away. We're going to ball it, but come on, Fulham. So we've got the better goal difference record than Leicester. Not by too much, but there is a little bit of separation. Plus three to plus eight uh, for us. And of course, if we win this game as well, that'll be plus nine minimum. 
But I just, I really just can't see us doing it. When, when you've got a young team and a relatively inexperienced team, so that can play a factor when it comes down to like holding on to leads, for example, or managing pressure, high pressure situations. It's one of the reasons I love FM, man. It's just, it's just so detailed and there are so many tangible factors that affect outcomes. It's just brilliant. It really, really is. But uh, anyway, first highlight is falling to Brighton. No real surprises. Tariq Lamptey turns KWP shot blocked and scrambled away by our number two. Just don't feel confident at all. Leicester, by the way, won their earlier kickoff away against Bournemouth. So that's why they are currently, well, as things stand, two points clear. Um, but if we lose this game, they'll go three points clear. I just, I, I don't know what it is, but it's just that the pessimist in me just feels so negative. You know, I think it's just because it's it's season four, you know, we've made great progression, but I just don't feel as Mac Allister's shot is blocked by Zambo. I just don't feel we can handle the pressure situations at the moment, man. Our team is too young. It's it's too inexperienced. I don't like it. Like, I'd, I'd rather us be like where Spurs are right now, you know, like rank outsiders. No one expects us to make the ground up so we can play without pressure. But because of where we are, where we are right now, as Shallow's header is caught by Rodak, it's like... People expect us to put up the fight in the final six games. And I think we're going to, like, lose probably, like, four of them, you know? I just don't feel confident at all. As Grealish sends Geraldo through. He's not the quickest at six foot four, but he'll hold the ball up. And taken down by Ben White. Is that a penalty? Is that a penalty? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on. We'll take your time. I want to know now. Penalty? Oh, God. <laughs> penalty. Oh, who's taking it? Bamford, surely. He rarely ever misses from penos. Patrick, 12 yards, penalty kick. Oh, for fuck's sake. I swear he scored practically every single penalty he's taken since he joined us. And of course, the biggest one of the save. And he has it saved by Dragowski. What did I tell you, man? Pressure. We just can't handle the nerves. As Zambo wins it back. Oh, surely. No, why would you... Why would you pass around her? You were literally like 10 yards from goal. Uh, I'm just going to like, that's a tablet, mate. I'm just going to quickly just shout and, and demand more. We've got five minutes to go. And, oh, we've blown two golden chances. Let's bring on Cavallero for Bamford. Grealish off for the kid, Bab and Gida. Uh, and I think I'll bring on Gagliadini for Lewis. Cook change. He and Zambo's rolls around. So I like better Zambo operating as a box to box to get four. Because he can, to be fair, provide some good attacking threat on the offensive end. But I think we've blown it. We've bottled it. And like I predicted, we've choked it. Bamford from the spot. Hold on, Doxy boy. Ivan. There he is, Zambo, about 40 yards from goal. Not in much of a dangerous position so far. There's 20 seconds of stoppage time to find a winner and put us into seventh. We've passed it backwards to Gagliadini, but he'll take it forward. The Italian... <gasps> no! How did you just cross the What was that? Oh my god. Free... Golden chances, and we spurn them all. Bamford from the spot. Geraldo passing up a one-on-one -on -one from 10 yards. And then Para Camby, who scored a screamer in the last game, tripped over his laces and missed kicked the ball. <sighs> what did I say about young players and choking it? That is absolutely gutting. It's, it's our fourth clean sheet in five, to be fair. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Oh my goodness, the amount of clauses we've given out this season. What's our financial situation looking like now? 17.8 in the balance. Not terrible, I suppose. But, oh, mate, we should have won that. We should have scored at least one of those three chances. That would have put us back into seventh. Six games to go. I called it. Youngsters bottling it. I mean, look, we've still got six games to go. And when you look at the fixtures we've got here, look, Crystal Palace away, struggling to survive. Wolves at home having a poor season. Spurs, obviously, still have the outside shot of a European place, but really, the FA Cup is their best chance. Everton away, that's going to be tough at Goodison Park. Southampton away, and also Manchester United too. I think, I think really, we need to win all three of these games, because I think we'll probably only win two of these four at the most. So really, we need to start off with a win, and win and get nine points from nine here. If we don't beat Crystal Palace and Wolves back-to-back... I think we definitely have bottled it.
Leicester's running is easier than ours, by the way. West Ham away, Brentford and Brighton in a home doubleheader. Wolves away, Crystal Palace home and Spurs away. Really, they should be able to win all of those games. The Spurs away day will be the trickiest test on the final day. So, I mean, we're still in it. We're still in it, but that, that is a big, big blow. And oh, yeah, God, I forgot. Everton away at Wolves on Monday night. Now, we really need Wolves to do us a favour. And they did, to be fair, 3 free, free. But look at that. Richard Leeson, 97th minute leveller after Adama Traore thought he'd won it for them. But to be fair, a point means there's still only five points clear of us. And the goal difference gap isn't too big. That There's still chances here. Look, don't, don't offer me a loan deal when we're like in the biggest stage of the series right now for one of my youngs. This is this is not what I'm going to focus my energy on, man. I'll tell you what, Crystal Palace away is so worst part. Do you know what we need right now? Do you know what we need right now? Friday morning, fuck ball distribution. No, absolutely not. We are going on a little team bonding session before we take the trip to Selhurst Park. Absolutely. We need we need drinks in in the morning. Let's pop to Weatherspoons and uh, let's just get pissed before we get to the hotel room in the evening. Oh, man. Come on, Fulham. We can still do this, man. Oh, God. By the way, some of you guys have been asking me in the comments what's been going on with Big Willy, Lindemo, because obviously last season he got a bit of game time. This season you've not seen him at all. So basically, uh, uh, Manchester United put a bid in uh, in January, and of course I rejected it, and he, he really wanted to go, and since then, um, he... Okay, fair enough. He, um, he won't listen to new contract talks now because he's unhappy at the club so it looks like we're going to lose Lundemo and I'm gutted as well because he as we know has a really bright future 19 determination be tearing up at youth level um, but it seems like because there has been major interest from major European clubs look at the amount of clubs that are interested now to be fair uh, a lot of the big ones we had into Milan that were interested recently Manchester United I think Arsenal as well at some point too but there's loads of clubs interested and he's out of contract next season so I think he's going, but since Geraldo's come in, we, we've barely seen him. So I think Lindemo in the summer will definitely leave. Oh, I tell you what, look at this young lad. 17 years old. Those men, oh mate, where are the blades right now? 11th, they're not going up. Does he have a non-promotion release clause? He does not. Disappointing. You know when you find like a, a new gen slash regen that looks like he'd be perfect for you? Ah, oh, Sheffield United would want like a hundred million if I just put in like a little knockoff bid. So yeah, sixty-four mil for the seventeen-year-old. Whenever you find players like that, you're just like, I want you, and I'm going to get you. You know, <laughs> it's like I really want this kid. He looks incredible. So moving on, Saturday afternoon, second and final game today, and the nerves are real. Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park. By the way, Leicester away against West Ham today. So, of course, we'll keep our eyes on that. It's getting played at the same time as our game. When are Everton playing? Tomorrow? Yes, they've got Spurs away. Tricky test there for them in North London. So, yes, haven't lost in any of our last four. We've kept clean sheets in our last four as well. But it's wins we need if we're going to leapfrog the Foxes. Hence the game. Bound for the course is down with that minor injury, which means he'll be replacing our starting 11. But otherwise, the same team. So, Rodak still in goal. Back four. KW. Tossi and Jerome and Robertson, Cook and Zambo through the middle. Grealish on the left, Caballero comes in on the right, and Paracambi and Geraldo. So much pressure on two 18 year olds to lead us into Europe. On the bench, Ashby Hammond, Mings, Harrison Reed, Gagliardini, Babin Gida, McAndrew, a young Welsh striker who's been developing pretty nicely in our youth setup, and also Bobby Reed as well. Second and final game, Crystal Palace away. Must return to winning ways here. Crystal Palace right now are just above the drop zone by a point. So this is a massive game for both teams. Really, both sides need the three points here. A point, again, is not disastrous for either team, but we're, we're going to see both teams going all out for the win in this one, no doubt about it. So I can't see Crystal Palace being satisfied with just the draw, and their first chance is going to come early, and a hard shot is blocked, and Roberts makes a crucial last-ditch tackle and we'll clear it away only just in the nick of time. Defensively, we have been sublime at times late on the season. Geraldo! Corner, Fulham, Paracambi. Tossi onto the roof of the net. Action pack start, just like I expected. Come on, Fulham. 20 minutes in. Oh, there's goals in this game. There are goals in this one. No way this finishes as a stalemate as well. Is Tyreek Mitchell down left-hand side. Bring his man out of position and finding a Brecci Eze. Fernandez takes over. Mateta rolls it through. Rian Brewster with a scorcher. Bottling it. Yep. 
not one bit surprised. We just can't handle the pressure. Brett Gizé with a little offload there. And after Matata rolls it through to Rian. Just a little bit of space. And Marek Rodak didn't want to get in the way of that one. And to be fair, I don't blame him. The shot power from the former Norwich legend of last season. Mr. Big Game, Rian Brewster, fires the host in front. We should not have got pissed yesterday morning, should we? Bad decision from the manager, I think. Come on, Fulham. We're still in this one here. 28 minutes in. That's a shocking ball. Mitchell intercepts. And goodness gracious me, Zahar is through. And it should have been two. You know what's going to happen? We're going to win all our remaining games off camera. I'll come back for the final two games and we'll lose back to back and choke seventh place. It's just, it's written. It's written as Leicester are in front against West Ham. Lee and Delap on loan from Manchester City gives them the advantage before the break. I just, I, I don't know what it is, man, but it's pressure, it's nerves, it's everything. It's me being a tactical fraud. It's a, it's a combination of most things, but primarily that last one. Caballero picks it up, tries to beat his man and does. Shows him a clean set of heels and crosses and Jack Grealish gets in. 1-1. One, one. <sighs> Come on! He's been slightly disappointing this season, but I can forgive him due to the injuries he's had. Caballero whips it to the back stick, and Jack, to be fair, very composed. First time volley, finds the bottom corner. Fulham had their level a bit again with Leicester winning right now against West Ham. They're going to go five points clear with six to go. Need to find a winner. I don't know what to say at half time. But I'm going to put my hands in my pockets and just try and keep it calm. To be honest, just try and keep it calm. Media have given you a lot of credit lately, so go out there and put on a worthy display. Not going to talk about what's at stake right now. Just talk about the boys going to get their faces in the paper. Second half to begin. And there's a winner. There's definitely a winner. I don't see this finishing all square. Someone's going to win it. Oh, but I don't know who it's going to be. We've had chances again, just like against Brighton. Paracambi. Cross cleared and Cook wins it back. Chance remains alive. Go on, Paracambi. Shot blocked in a corner. We've played better, but that means very little to me in FM because often we will play better and yet we'll still lose. As that corner is headed clear, there's definitely going to be another goal in this second half. Someone's going to win it. 22 minutes to go, and I might have jinxed it once again. <laughs> As we're still tied at 1 1. Where are the chances? What's going on? Oh, God, highlight Crystal Palace. Just end my life. Rian Brewster, back to Tyreek Mitchell. The goal is coming. You just sense it. Wilf steps in field, and that shot is... Oh, Rodak! Kept it out, to be fair. Did, did enough. There was no pressure. Well, this is it. And I feel like we might as well just lose the game by chasing it, really. I'm going to bring on Gagliardini for Kirk. Swap he and Zambo's roles around. Haven't got any more offense-based players on the pitch. Apart from, to be fair, uh, Bab and Gida. So I could actually bring on Bab and Gida. In fact, yeah, let's do that. But who can play box? Oh, we're, we're really going for it now. We are really going for it now. 44. Might as well go more direct in our play as well. Play as high as we can in terms of our tempo. And I'll have McAndrew supporting Bobby Reed up top. And I don't know what is going on here. Paracam, you can play as a roaming playmaker. Get yourself forward, son. I'd, we could lose this game by chasing it. I really don't know what's going to happen here. This is risky as fuck. Well, Leicester are tuning up on West Ham. They've won it. Oh, my God. <gasps> Dead ball specialist, Paracambi, what a cross, Jerome, in off the post, and now I feel like I ought to change my tactics a little bit, because we're so bloody attacking, we need to have some players sort of back a little bit, right, let's just change these roles around, Bobby, you can play as an advanced player, mate, to be fair, uh, Paracambi, just, just sit deeper now, son, just sit deeper, and calm your tits, um... Uh, let's load the tempo, and I know time wasting comes back to haunt you, but fuck it. Let's just kick the ball into Rose Ed, and someone needs to lose it in the stands. We've got two minutes to hold on. <sighs> Come on, Fulham, right at the death. Get the fuck in. Big Jerome is a bloody man mountain at times, I tell ya. I tell ya. The boy at times comes good when we need him the most. On both ends of the pitch this season. He scored like five goals this year. Oh my word. I tell you what, we were close to bottling it again. But we keep the pressure on Leicester and Everton who played tomorrow. Before then the episode, we'll, we'll simulate through that game. But get in, Jerome. 
Oh my god, I love him so much, man. Love this guy. This guy next season is taking the vice captaincy, no doubt about it. Tyrone Mings is going to give it up to him. He's 26 in the prime of his career. Who's the interest from? Atalanta. Interesting. Oh, what a big win. Right, it's Sunday, so we're going to process through the Everton game at 2pm against Spurs. Hopefully Tottenham can do us a favour and take points off the Toffees. And did they or did they not? So just... just I just okay, okay, did they do it or not? Because I can't Premier League matches. Yes, they did. Spurs beat them by two goals to one. So that means we're two behind both Leicester and Everton as well. Five behind Chelsea. They've got the two games in hand. So really, I don't feel we're going to catch the Blues. But thank you, Spurs, and thank you, Jerome, more than anyone, because with five games to go. We're still in this, baby. Get in. So that was this episode of the FM Save, guys. Big fan. Fortunately, hope you have enjoyed it. Oh, mate. So I really want to play that Everton game. I think I need to. Are we going to do a triple header to end the season? A big bumper episode? I think we kind of need to, really. Oh, God. We're still in this, baby. Let's, let's end the season with an absolute thriller. Like a really long, big bumper episode. Well, we could miss out on Europe or we could qualify for it. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the season finale with Fulham on the cusp of a European place very soon. Do not miss that finale. My goodness. Oh.